All right, we're back for another episode of the Ukraine series covering the conflict in the area and specifically the recent gains by the Russians in the Donbass. Last time we talked about the fall of Serbian to Donetsk and what was next for the rest of the Luhansk region, and it looks like it's come to fruition. The uh, rest of Luchansk has fallen, um, and it's pretty well clear that the rest of the area by the Luhansk region, including Bielohorveka and Novodurninsk, has probably been captured by Russia too. There has been reported proof, but they are making steady gains in the area um, to the point where they're on the outskirts of Vek Kamensky, um, and they're probably going to start pushing towards Severdursk. Uh, Seversk, sorry if I pronounce it butcher that pronunciation, eventually try to get to Slavonsk and Kretomorsk, which will take a while. Um, Bakhmut is also a key target just because it's a key supply hub. So these two cities will be important for Ukraine's efforts in the region. If Sirisk falls, then all the area down here is probably going to fall too, just because of the road network that connects to it. Um, and there's also key transit hubs in this area. Um, but yeah, so Russia's made a lot of gains in this area. It's mostly because Ukraine has pulled out of the area because they couldn't hold it. They're getting pushed from down here, getting pushed from over here. They captured Pravila by crossing the river, so they couldn't hold it from the north. They had really no chance. So it was a strategic pullout, um, not to cope and say, oh, yeah, look at Ukraine being smart. No, it, it was a smart move, but it's also out of desperation because they couldn't really hold that area. Um, for the Zaporizhian front, they're still trying to push towards Poloni. I, I haven't seen anything that says they're on the outskirts of it yet, but uh, something to follow, I guess. If they capture it, then like I've mentioned in previous episodes, supply hub, that'll matter. Um, and we'll talk about later uh, some of the recent news that could change the game of this area. Cherson front... Um, there was a recent about a, even a Devika, I believe, falling. I couldn't really find that on the map. I looked hard. Um, I know it's somewhere in the northeast, but uh, it's something I'll keep my eyes on about even Devika. I, I know I'm looking live right now. I should have done my research, but at the same time, um, yeah, but it's Somewhere around here, it looks like that uh, Ukraine is making gains, and there has been reports, I think it was by the Wall Street Journal, that Ukraine is preparing a summer offensive to retake the Kherson Oblast, which, now that's easier said than done, you could probably take this part, um, and you could certainly get within range of the international airport and the city itself, but the rest of the Oblast goes like, I think like down here, right? So trying to take that is no easy task, especially for Ukraine's limited area capabilities. But with Russia putting all their manpower in here, it is possible to do a large counteroffensive in the region. We saw this with Kharkiv, which was a limited counteroffensive. Um, and they've made gains, slow and steady. Um, we don't know if they still have the river crossing here by uh, Metalovica, but yeah, still. Um, there's also reports of Izium. There's, a lot of bombings there. The supply hubs are getting hit like literally every other day at this point. And if they can get captures of Odi, which I said before that there's reports Ukraine was in it and Andrabika and put pressure on the P-79 highway, then you can certainly target Izium with a lot shorter range, um, you know, munitions and not needing the longer range uh, artillery that the U.S. and other countries supplied. But I believe that's it for the front line. Um, we have heard reports about Belarus becoming more and more pissed off and saying that they stopped Ukrainian missiles from hitting their territory. I don't believe that. I think right now Lukashenko is not knowing he doesn't want a war, but he's also trying to be like a puppet to Russia and say he supports them. So I don't see Belarusian troops entering Ukraine just yet. Um, I haven't seen enough. But once again, I wasn't fully convinced at the time for a little bit that Russia would actually invade Ukraine until I saw the massive scale of buildup. So we'll be following in this area. If we see a lot of troops, then that's something I'll look at. Um, then for the news section, uh, Slovakia is going to be giving them a fresh set of aircraft. 
MiG-29, which is an older model, but it's still important to Ukraine to be able to defend their skies, especially with the S-27 bombers that keep bombing most of Ukraine and was bombing civilian centers, which pissed off a lot of Ukrainians. Um, so yeah, that's huge game changer for Ukraine once they get their hands on the MiG, because the MiG is very effective in what it does and will be very effective in shooting down the Sioux. Next news is that Turkey detained a Russian cargo ship carrying grain, which Ukraine says is stolen. So Russia has been delivering stolen grain that they took from the Cherson Zaporizhian fronts. Um, they take it down to either two second or two areas. It's Berdansk or uh, Melitopol. And basically they ship it to, I believe it's somewhere around here, Trabzon. And Turkey basically buys stolen grain. Now that's kind of screwed up for Turkey. NATO member, Ukraine's like, hey, you got to stop this. It's helping create a crisis. Um, if Russia knows no one's buying their grain, then, uh, well, they're going to kind of be limited in where they can deliver it to. Like they'll probably sell to China and India because that's what they've been doing amongst other things like oil and gas. But so limits their ability to work in the Black Sea, especially if they're losing tankers that like that. Turkey's going to kind of become less of a mediator and now more of a direct influence in conflict, especially in the economic war that Russia is waging on Ukraine. Next one is kind of big. Um, Russia was kind of hit last night by three different blasts, um, one in Belograd, where is Belograd? God, I know this too well, too. I've been studying maps for too long not to know it. Um, it's like uh, right here. Belograd. Uh, Kursk was hit. And I believe Melitopol Airport was hit right here. So that's three different um, long-range attacks Russia attacked with. At first, people think it was uh, MLRS, which were like long range missile systems that the US has recently supplied to Ukraine. But uh, they promised the US they wouldn't attack ter um, territory in Russia itself. They'd only attack occupied territory. So that would probably mean it's Tonka U uh, heavy missiles that hit them here. But in Millennia Pole, it looks more likely that Millennia Pole was hit by uh, the MLRS long range missile system because of something I will show you in a little bit. But I believe the Belograd and Kursk attacks failed while the Millennia Pole was effective, mostly because Russia has uh, less air defense in Ukraine and more in its core territory. So, yeah, uh, the airfield was struck by munitions. Uh, Food. The area wasn't within range, so the reports are a logistics base was hit, um, and that one of the four main bases in the Mladiapol area was hit. So definitely effective, and we'll see in coming days if Ukraine can kind of capitalize that and continue to use the MLRS systems as they get more of that and more ammo and attack more targets like Cherson, Mladiapol. Um, areas in the Donetsk, especially Izium, because if you can force Russia to no longer send supplies to Izium, then their entire push towards Slavonsk kind of gets very limited. And the P-79 and the MO3 become basically useless. So, yeah. Uh, my last tweet, basically near Miletia Pole, a bridge used by Russia to transport weapons to the front line was blown up. Um, and on July 2nd, armored train carrying Russian ammunition accidentally derailed no Millennium Pole. So there's been a lot of reports about uh, Russian or Ukrainian partisan activities in the key cities of Millennium Pole and Cherson to the point where there's bombings, attacks, sh um, shootings, et cetera, et cetera. And now it looks like they've switched to train derailment. Um, and this is an effective tactic because... Russia's heavily reliant on trains right now. They beef up their trains with heavy armor. And it looks like one of the attacks in recent days Ukraine did with regular missiles was taking out a heavy train that was 
parked near Millennial Pole on top of the airbase getting attacked. Um, and I think this is what, yeah, so this is what a rail network that you can see goes through Millennial Pole and goes down, connects there, and connects to the Dahansk and Luhansk regions, and essentially down to Crimea. Um, there's a little break here, but uh, it's pretty easy to get the supplies that they need from Crimea to the Zaporizhian front. Anyways, the point this is important is because if the partisans become more effective and more uh, active in their work, then we could see a Russian Afghanistan invasion part two with the Mujahideen, basically. Uh, Russia is kind of limited in what they can to stop these. You haven't seen many reports of Russia like cracking down on partisans. Um, they cut the supposed rail network from, I think it was from Tokmak to Melodia Pole, which would be right around here. Uh, and that will probably limit their supplies and the reinforcement ability if Ukraine continues the Zaporizhian offensive towards Polanyi, which it looks like it might be doing. So this also does show is that Ukraine is coordinating more with the partisans because the partisans know what to hit, probably based off Russian orders. They probably aren't working by themselves. And there's like a serious resistant network setting up. So yeah, that's it for the news. Uh, Going to be stuff to follow. Uh, this Cherson counteroffensive that Ukraine's been hyping up. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes to fruition with that. Also looking forward to seeing what comes to the Zaporizhian front. In terms of what's going to happen here, I mean, these have obviously been captured. There's no way Ukraine is holding them from three different directions. We're probably going to see like a, or on a new front from here to here, holding this railway. Um, and yeah, uh, join you guys next time. And anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to doing this again with new updates.